afternoon and welcome to the law. This is your legal light and it is your help, help law. Today is one of the days when we are so privileged. Privileged to be learning the law in a way that is unique. So we are not hosting a lawyer today or lawyers today, but we are hosting a judge. How do you acquire land and then secure it? That has been a major problem. And many of you have shared your issues with us regarding this question. A judge has spent his time, particularly on the New Land Act. There's a new law regulating transactions over land and everything about land. He spent his time and written a whole book on it. It's titled Essential Themes in Land Law and Customary Law. He's spending time with us this afternoon to help us to understand how we can acquire and secure land. We'll be right back. Section 12, subsection 2 of Land Act 2020, Act 1036. Protection of land and interest in land. A person who uses or through another person uses force, violence, or to prevent or obstruct a lawful owner of land from developing the land commits an offence and is liable on summary conviction to a term of imprisonment of not less than 10 years and not more than 15 years. Section 12, subsection 2 of Land Act 2020, Act 1036. Protection of land and interest in land. A person who uses or through another person uses force, violence, or to prevent or obstruct a lawful owner of land from developing the land commits an offence and is liable on summary conviction to a term of imprisonment of not less than 10 years and not more than 15 years. So that is for your segments, the Law 101, where we try to help you so that if by the end of the show you learnt nothing at all, you would have learnt that particular uh, education and keep it with you. We'll get our guest to help us explain what that means and why that was necessary in the new land law, which he has written about and taking special interest in the very interesting themes in that particular uh, act. His name is Alexander Osei Tutu, his lordship. is a justice of the high court here in Ghana and also in the Gambia. Thank you so very much for honoring our invitation. Thank you, Dr. Great. Um, so normally this is how we start. Uh, we do the Law 101 and uh, ask our guest to help us explain the law to our audiences. What does Section 12, Subsection 2 of the Land Act mean? What, what is its importance? Thank you, Samson. This provision is intended to curb the menace in Accra and the other parts of the country. And so if you look at the wording, the way the provision has been couched, mm -hmm. it's just a person who uses. So if the person himself uses force or through another person, there are some people who are in that business, they sit in the comfort of their home 
and send people to the ground to obstruct persons who are developing their lands. Okay. And the law says either you yourself uses force or through another person uh, uses force, violence or intimidation. So these are the three keywords. Okay. Using force, violence or intimidation to prevent or obstruct a lawful owner. So if you use force, mm -hmm. you use violence with the purpose of preventing or obstructing somebody who is the legitimate owner of the land, you commit an offense. Right. And uh, one thing we need to look at, or we need to be mindful of, is that this provision does not even attract a fine. It is a custodial uh, sentence. Okay, there's no opportunity to yes. pay money and go. Yes. If you are found. You have to go to prison. And the minimum number of years the court can give is 10 years. And the maximum is 15 years. The so court, the court can't do anything about the it. The court can't do anything. Even if you want to pay $100,000, the court will not give you that opportunity. You have to go to prison. For minimum of 10 years. Minimum of 10 and maximum of 15 years. And you look at the way it on summary conviction. So it means that a judge will not have to wait for a jury to be part, like in the uh, murder cases, and okay. which normally take time. Right. So such cases can easily be disposed of. One judge can deal with it in a short speed. My, my, my Lord, you can't do anything about the 10 years. No, no, no. The law, once the law has given the minimum, if a judge decides to give even nine years, the judge will be contravening the law. So you don't have a discretion? You don't have a discretion. Why do you think this uh, provision is important? Why was it introduced in the law? But you and I know what was happening uh, in Accra right. and other parts of Ghana. Mm. And the uh, land guard activities was, uh, were getting out of hand. So I think the lawmakers realized that there was a need to come out with such mm. A straight law that will be able to uh, people there. people lawfully acquire land but they can't develop it exactly because you some pay, people are obstructing intimidating and obstructing you pay uh, a huge money to acquire land but right. when you go on the land mm. uh, sometimes some people come and say you have to pay digging fee yes you pay digging fee when they hold no title they just frustrate you intimidate you mm. and your own land you have acquired mm. uh, you are unable to develop it Thank you so very much, His Lordship Alexander Osei Tutu, uh, giving us that education. And I'm sure many of you are very happy about this because the menace is really worrisome in our country. You lawfully acquire land, spend money as an individual or an institution, and yet you can develop it. And this law says, like my Lord just said, this is what you will be going to jail for. 10 to 15 years, no option of a fine. And we are talking to His Lordship Alexander Osei Tutu. He is a Justice of the High Court uh, here in Ghana and also in the Gambia. He's written the book, Essential Themes in Land Law and Customary Law. And he's spending his time this afternoon uh, to share uh, and educate us on some aspects of the law that he has so masterfully written about. So, as always, let's have your views, your questions that you normally would bring to us. Let's have those questions, and in due course, we will try and get you the answers to them. So, let's begin um, from the basis, because we are talking about land and transactions involving land. We hear things about, if I'm going to deal with uh, land, I have to be careful about the person I'm dealing with, whether he is the owner, and that there are different types of owners as in titles to land. What does that mean, and what do I look for if I want to engage in a, a land transaction? Thank you very much, Samson. In Ghana, one lawyer has said that people buy land as if they are buying tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> we have different types of um, interest in land. Right. Uh, the highest is called Alodia, and it's normally owned by uh, the two skin in the northern part of Ghana, 
the, uh, the, the skin. Uh, we have clans and families holding this alodia. In time past, the individual was not permitted to hold this alodia title. But in modern times, or under our recent legislation, Act 1036, the law now permits individual to acquire a Lodia title. And the state too can acquire a Lodia title through um, compulsory acquisition. So these are the categories. So in buying land, the first thing you need to ask yourself, what interest am I buying? Um, from the Lodia title, we have other interest. We have freehold interest. Okay. Freehold means for an unlimited period. And let me point out clearly at this point that uh, under our laws, the state, the, let me even reserve the state, the stew cannot grant a Lodia title, cannot grant freehold title. Okay. This is in the constitution. The skin. So if you, want, you go to a chief and you say you want a freehold, give me land where there is no limited period, the law does not permit that. Give me land for an unlimited, for more or less forever. Forever. Yes. A stool cannot give me that. A stool cannot give you. Northern part of Ghana, a skin cannot give you. Clan cannot give you. And even family. Before this law, Act 1036, mm -hmm. the limitation was only in respect of stools. Mm -hmm. But now, Act 1036, Section 9, has extended the prohibition to cover uh, families. I don't understand. If we have the Alodia title, why can't we give somebody forever? Uh, the state is trying to protect the land so that we, cannot, uh, we will not get a foreigner coming in, having money to acquire all the lands in Ghana. Mm. So foreigners are not permitted to own a uh, Lodia title. And one person, if you think you have money, I want to acquire, let's say, land from the, if care is not taken, or if that provision was not inserted, a time will come where I'm rich, I acquire all the land, and I tell all Ghanaians or everybody to leave <laughs> the yeah. land for me. Right. So mm. a family cannot grant okay. freehold. Okay. And the state also cannot grant freehold. That is uh, provided under, uh, under the New Land Act, okay. specifically Section yeah. 235. I, I see that you treat that under Chapter 1 of your book. Yes. Okay. So the only person who can grant a freehold now is the individual. Okay. So if I acquired a, free la a freehold land some time ago, I can now dispose of that interest to another person. Mm. But apart from an individual, the state cannot, nobody can say, I, I acquire a land from the state and it is for an unlimited period. Okay. Right. Uh, so in that circumstance, if I am getting my land from a chief, from a skin, from a family, from a clan, um, what can I get? So that, that, so that I know that if they are purporting to give me something, then I'll know that it is illegal. So what they are giving, they can't give. Good. At this juncture, I will draw a distinction between Ghanaians and foreigners. Okay. If you are a foreigner, the maximum interest you can acquire is a lease for 50 years. 50 years? 50 years. Maximum? Maximum. You can't get more than that? You can't get more than that. how much 50, money you have? 51 years, you can't get. Okay. If you are a Ghanaian, the maximum interest you can acquire from a stew, skin, clan, of family is a lease. Okay. A lease of, let's say, 99 years. 99 years. Yes. And the New Land Act now makes it possible for the le uh, lease to be renewed. Okay. The intention is yes, you acknowledge ownership of the lessor, the landowner. Right. So you'll be there for 99 years. After 99 years, you come back to us for you to recognize that though we've given you land, it's not for you forever. So that's the intent of the so law. So even though I can pay for what you call a lease for 99 years, at the expiration of the 99 years, I have to go and do a renewal. Exactly. Is that guaranteed? 
the new land act guarantees that okay but you pay uh, you you pay a reasonable amount All for right. your um, uh, for the renewal of the lease it cannot happen that the the lessor that's what you just said the lessor is the one who gives to you and you the one who is taking the lease is the lessee it cannot happen that the lessor will say I am not interested in renewing. If you have done your 99 years, get off the land, irrespective of whatever building you are, structure you have put on the, on the land. No, it cannot. The new land act guarantees. Okay. Uh, hitherto, before 2020, there was no such provision, but now there was that automatic renewal of leases. All right. All right. So you are here on the law. This is your legal light. It is your help law. And it is one of those uh, days that we have the rare privilege. And we are hosting a justice of the high court here in Ghana and also in the Gambia, his lordship, Alexander Osei Tutu. And he has authored a book on the new land act. That's a new law regarding landed transactions. So about everything about land. And what we have actually started is in chapter one. I must tell you ahead of time so that you know that you will need the book. Right, so um, the family, the, the stool, the skin, uh, the clan, and the individual, only the individual can give a Lodia title. The rest of them, a freehold um, uh, you know, title, the rest of them can give us a lease. Good. Um, how do I make sure, or how do I assure myself that this uh, stool or skin or this family or this clan that is saying that they are the ones who own the land and are giving me a lease out of it, um, they actually are the owner so that I don't finish and then get myself into trouble. Somebody else comes in and says, no, they are not the ones. Uh, thank you. Mm. Uh, the law under Section 14 is creating something called Customary Land Secretariat. Right. And it behoves on every stool, skin, clan, or family to ensure that it establishes this Customary Land Secretariat so that all the details about its land will be provided. Uh, I understand, I checked from the uh, Lands Commission, I understand they are in the process of um, getting it in place. Okay. Then that every stool, skin, clan, clan or, family. or family is supposed to have a secretariat okay. to manage its lands where details of its transaction will be there. So any, um, anybody who wants to acquire land can go there and know who, which land has been acquired and which land has not been acquired. All right. And you just said the Lands Commission, we not long ago, we, we, we heard that they were trying to go around the country to educate people about this part of the law so that they will create that kind of secretariat. Um, you, you, you think that is a good solution to end the issues of multiple uh, sales and the rest of them? If you ask my personal view, I will say yes and no. Why yes? Yes, because it will make it easier for a prospective purchaser to know which land is an incumbent and which land is not incumbent. But no, in the sense that the law as it stands, it is requiring every stew, mm -hmm. every individual, every family. Look at the number of families we have in Ghana. Right. And if they are all to create their own secretariat, I think it will be difficult. Mm. I was thinking we would have a uniform a secretariat where that will take care of all these customary uh, entities, like a secretary that will register all the lands mm. without leaving it to individual families and schools to create their own secretary. Mm. Where are they even going to get the, uh, the human resource from to manage this individual but once you have secretary? Family, once you have family and you have land, a clan, you have land, a stool, skin, you definitely have land. And you are supposed to create a secretariat. I suppose the secretariat will not require too much of, um, as it were, staff. You could, all you may need is just one person so that you 
the purpose is to document the lands you have and which you have given out, which you have not given out, so that if people are coming to transact, they know that you have given out this place, you have not given out that place, this place you own it, this place you don't own it. Good. It's easier said than done. If you go to the law, the functions of the secretariat mm -hmm. under Section 51 uh, have been felt, uh, spelled out. Okay. There are a lot. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it will require a very experienced person to be able to uh, perform these responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, you go to the villages, you may have only few, many families, but only few persons who are um, academically endowed and will be able to perform the work. Are we saying that one individual, let's say we have two or three educated, this, they are going to do this work for all the uh, villages, all the uh, families mm. in that village. So I thought that because the responsibilities entrusted on the secretariat are quite exhaustive, I thought they could have centralized it for experienced personnel, personnel to right. uh, manage. The, the section you just pointed to, I've just opened to a section 15, it talks about the functions and it says, um, so uh, each stool, each family, each skin, each, uh, each clan that has land is supposed to create a secretariat and this will be the functions of the secretariat. Record the interest and rights in land and keep and maintain accurate and up-to-date records of land transactions in the area of operation <clears throat> of that secretariat. Provide a list of existing uh, customary interests and rights in land in the area of operation of uh, that uh, customary land, including indication of persons with the capacity to make grants of the interests and rights in the area, to provide relevant records on land, information on the hierarchy of interests and rights in land, and lay down processes for effective dispute resolution, facilitate the settlement of land dispute through alternative dispute resolution, facilitate participatory preparation of local plans, undertake community education and awareness creation on issues, um, land issues, prepare periodic accounts of all revenue received, um, and then provide facilities for search to be conducted on the records of the land. I see, that's a lot. It's a lot. But this is very useful. Very useful. Mm. Well, that's why I thought a, secretary, a centralized secretariat could have been created for experienced persons to man the secretariat. Mm. So when we're asking the question about the rightful people to deal with, this one says what they, they should provide should also include giving indication of persons with the capacity to make grants of the interest and rights in that area. Yes. So if you see heads of families who are corrupt, they can mislead you and we go back to the, the same problem. Mm. But if you get an independent personnel uh, managing this office, I, I believe, in my personal view, would be better than leaving it to the various tools and families to uh, manage themselves. So where we have had situations where uh, particular members of a, a family or a stool or a skin will give you a lease and then some people will come later to say, he doesn't have the right to do so. The family has not given him the power. This will resolve it because they will have the record that states the person you must deal with if you need land. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. So here is very free uh, education that you will get at uh, some cost <laughs> if you walked into a lawyer's chambers or people who are trying to help you uh, secure land. Our guest is His Lordship Alexander Osei Tutuhui is the author of a new book, Essential Themes in Land Law and Customary Law. And he has gone through the new Land Act trying to tease out the areas that are important for all of us to know so that we will be able to secure our interest in land because we all need a piece of the earth somewhat. This is the law. It's your legal light. It's your health law. Uh, shortly, I will be giving you the opportunity to uh, let's have your questions. And so 
they will be addressed. Now, um, the, the, the parts, there's, there's a portion to that you address the issues that we have, for example, brought up the, the first part in the Law 101, where people who stand in your way of developing your land, if you have acquired it, will be punished with minimum 10 years, maximum uh, 15 years. How else do we stop this canker of multiple sales and the rest of them and people trying to frustrate owners of land? Thank you, Sam. Mm. Um, if I will be permitted, there was mm. one point I had wanted to make before That's fine. we moved to. That's fine. Um, the, it has to do with Section 68.9 of the New Lands Act. Right. Uh, before this law, the law that if you wanted to acquire land from a family, all you needed was the head of family with the consent of the principal uh, elders. elders. If you are acquiring the land from a stool, a chief, you need the head of family, the, the occupant, that's the chief, with the consent of the principal elders. Prior to the Supreme Court's decision in uh, Apia in Chi, that is 2018, the position of the law was that the occupant of the stool, that's the chief with minority of the, elder, of the elders, could not dispose of family land. But in 2018, the Supreme Court held that the occupant of the two with minority of the elders, so if the elders are, let's say, 20, and you get two or three, the consent of the uh, minority was enough. Mm. And that, in the case of even a family, if the head of family alone disposes of land, it was not void. It was voidable. Voidable means it's valid. Only that steps can be taken to invalidate it. Well, void means? Void means, in law, we say void ab in issues. From the word go, the law does not recognize it. You would have, so it is null and... You would have done signed documents, paid the for The law it. doesn't see it as a convenience. Nothing has been done. Nothing has been You've done. you thrown your money away. Yes. But under the current regime, uh, the law says a convenience is deemed to have been executed by a stool or skin, or clan, or family, if the instrument is executed by all the individuals. So this time it's not minority or the majority. All the individual whose consent is by customary law a necessary condition for the conveyance to bind the stool or skin, or clan, or family. Mm. So now if you are acquiring land, you need the consent of all the principal elders, meaning that if they are 20 and 19 even, support the grant, minus one. It is not valid. That's mm. the, is it all? Emphasis is on all, not majority. Mm. That's the position of the law now. But, but this is difficult, isn't it? It's, in my view, it's very difficult. How do you even ascertain all the principal elders of the family? And what will be the nature? The law is not saying that now they should give their consent. Mm. If you read it carefully, it says, a conveyance is deemed to have been executed by a stool or skin or clan or family. If the instrument is executed, so they must all sign. Okay. They all the header to. They, you just needed their consent. Mm. But now it must be executed by all, not just the consent. Executed by all. And my lordship explained that to say that it means all the uh, principal persons in that family or clan or skin must sign. They must sign your document for you. Uh, we, we know that often there'll be one person who is leading the process, you know, and maybe a chief will tell you that, well, this is my man. He's the one leading everything. Give him this amount of money. He'll go and do the indenture for you and do everything. Sometimes you are not even there. He'll take it, uh, bring it to you and everybody who are supposed to sign have signed. That used to be the case before mm. this law was enacted. All right. But now that cannot be possible. Mm. You need all of them okay. to execute the instrument before it can be valid. And the emphasis is executed by all, all, right. all the persons whose consent. Now I move to your question. Right. 
Yes. Um, apart from the law criminalizing uh, this land guard activity. Yeah, my Lord, you have to hold on briefly for me. We have to take a quick break. And when we return, uh, my Lord will continue on giving the criminal punishments that exist for people who are engaged in multiple sales and the rest of it of lands that have just been cheating people, particularly in Accra. But you have learned something right now that you didn't know. And I'm sure many lawyers too are learning this for the first time. This is the law. It's your legal light and help law. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is the law. It's your legal light. It's your help law. And our very special guest is His Lordship Alexander Osei-Tutu. He is a justice of the High Court here in Ghana and in the Gambia. And he's taking us through uh, some important things we need to know as far as the law regarding land and land transactions are concerned because there's been a lot of changes that have happened. And he has written a book uh, on that, and uh, everything we've started sharing is right here in this uh, very book. And as you can see, it's titled Essential Themes in Land Law uh, and Customary Law, is by His Lordship Alexander Osei Tutu. Uh, so if the judge says this is the law, <laughs> that's the law. As we see, the law is in the bosom of the judge. Um, before we took a break, you were, we went on break, you were educating, getting to uh, educate us about the issues of uh, multiple sales and people seeking to stand in the way of people who have, you know, legally and lawfully acquired land. How is that resolved now? Good. Uh, I, I will categorize the land guards into two. Those who go on the land, and those who sit in the office and do their own thing. If you go to se Section 277 of the Act, okay. officers, some, sometimes these people who frustrate land developers have their men at the land's office who frustrate, they, sometimes they can falsify your document, they can deface, mm. fraudulently deface or obliterate your papers. Okay. Uh, so the law now criminalizes some of these activities, like falsifying land records, um, fraudulently removing from the land commission any land register or part of any land register or document, mm. uh, fraudulently defacing, obliterating, or mutilating any land register. So those are the land's office who double in such activities are also targeted by the law, mm -hmm. and they also commit an offense. So now the law looks at those who go to the land mm -hmm. and those who are at the land's office. As like you said, those who sit in the office. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So both are targeted. So we should not only concentrate or focus on only the land guards themselves, but those who are in the offices, it's not as if they are untouchable. Now right. the law touches them. Okay. And they too can um, be... So, so the situation is such that they, their job in sitting in the land's office is to protect my interests, ensure that the records are clean. But there are situations where they can be compromised and then they will try and go and deface, obliterate as, it's, as it is, or make false entries and falsify, you know, the records. Exactly. And you will be at a disadvantage. Now, they are in trouble if they try to do so. Mm. Exactly. And if you look at the 2772, mm. it says a person who purports to make a grant of land to which that person has no title, purports to make a grant of land without authority, also commit an offense. Mm. So if I find somebody's land and I take your money, uh, claiming that I'm the owner, or I'm a family member, I'm not the head of family, I take your money, and 
uh, say that I'm granting the land to you, knowing very well that I'm not the one in charge of the family. So those we are, were talking about earlier, if you come to say, I represent this family, I'm the one who has a right to deal with you in this thing, and you don't have that right, yes. you are in trouble. This session targets mm. you. So it's very comprehensive. Okay. And apart from going to jail, mm -hmm. the 2776 Federal provides proceedings or a conviction in respect of any act, which is an offense under this session, shall not affect the remedy which a person aggrieved or injured by the act may be entitled to against the person or the estate of the person who committed the act. Mm -hmm. So apart from going to jail, the landowner can bring civil action against you. Mm -hmm. but, but before the jail, the, here there's a, the option of a fine. It says... Um, if you do these things, it says you, you commit an offense and it's liable on summary conviction to a fine not less than 7,500 7, penalty units um, and not more than 15,000 penalty units or to a term of imprisonment of not less than seven years and not more than 15 years or both. Yes. Okay. Um, a penalty unit is 12 Ghana CDs. Exactly. So you multiply that by 7,500. That's the minimum. And then the maximum is 15,000 penalty units. So 12 times 15,000. You're looking at uh, 90,000 minimum and uh, over 100,000, 180,000 or so. Okay, that's really good. Um, so let me get a few of your, your direct questions. Apia, you're calling us from Osu. Hello, Apia. Yes, boss. Good, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. What will be your question around the issues that we are being educated on? Yes, uh, I have a, uh, a piece of land. Mm -hmm. I bought from uh, Nungwa Chief at Bachuna. <laughs> to register 2015. But somehow mm -hmm. along the line, someone was registered at the title 2020 through Tishi. So the matter is in court. I don't know. Yes, sir. Hello. All right. Yes, sir. Hello. Um, Hi, yes, sir. Um, yes, we can hear you, but um, I'll let my lord say what I was going to tell you. Let's go to James in Ekropong. Hello, James. Join news. Hi, James. Let's hear you. Hello. James, we can hear you. Go ahead with your question. Yeah, I want to know the process involved in. Uh, uh, transferring a land to from one person to another. Um, how do you mean transferring from who to who? Like I, I bought it from a chief, and now I'm selling it to a brother. You got the land from a chief. I bought it from the chief. Right, and you want to sell it to your brother? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. It's a very simple process. My lord will explain that to you. Um, let me take one or two more calls. Arnold. Hello, Arnold. Hello, Arnold. Hello. Yes, Arnold, go ahead. Okay. I... Arnold, go ahead. Yes, um, please, uh, my father bought a land. Hello, hello, sir. Go yes. ahead. My father bought a land at the mm -hmm. somewhere next to and and there has been encroachment several times until we met a woman who came to a, somebody selling to that woman. And the case has been in court for over 10 years now. Hello? Okay, okay, yes. And uh, the case has, the, the ruling came, but not for, 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 for the, um, it's left with how to you know, break the, 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 the house. And, and we don't know how to go about it as of now. Okay. Uh, thank you. The very last call I take is from Evans. Evans, you are calling from Osudoku. Hello, Evans. Yeah, yes, please. Uh, Let's hear you. Yes, Evans. I think I lost Evans. Okay, thank you. Uh, please don't call. Hold on. Um, so, my lord, the very first caller, he started to tell a story but said that the matter is in the court. 
Uh, because it's in court, I cannot comment on it. Right. And then uh, our caller from Ekropong says he got the property from a chief and he wants to transfer it to his brother. How does he do it? If you look at Section 35 of the Lands Act, mm -hmm. it provides a mode of transfer. It just has to be in writing, signed by himself and the transferee. Okay. Um, he, the one who is transferring it to his brother? Yes must sign it. Must, okay. It must be in writing. The law says, and I would like to quickly read, right. mode of transfer. A transfer of an interest in land other than a transfer specified in section 36 shall be in writing and signed by A, the person making the transfer or by the agent of that person duly authorized in writing. And B, the person to whom the transfer is made or the agent of that person duly authorized in writing. Mm. And the two reads, a transfer of an interest in land made in a manner other than that provided in this session does not confer an interest on the person to whom the transfer is made. Trouble come. <laughs> so pay attention and you will definitely may need uh, the assistance of uh, some lawyers to help you. Otherwise, like the law says, if you don't do it in the manner that the law requests you to do it, it's like my law said earlier, there's something called void ab initio. It looks like you have done something, but the law doesn't recognize it at all. So if money was involved, it's completely lost. Nothing has happened. Right. Then um, Arnold also said the matter is in court. So I think the first answer uh, goes to him. When a matter is in court, we cannot be uh, seeking to soliciting advice from my Lord for you. And then we lost Evans in uh, the course of trying to hear him uh, speak. <clears throat> um, okay, so I have a question sent to us by uh, mail. It says, my community has been without a chief since 1970. So in the absence of a unified chief, hmm, unified chief, the nine subdivisional chiefs are selling the two lands as if it is their bona fide property. How do we stop them? How can Lands Commission assist clans, document, and protect skin lands, such as site plans and surveyed lands? Thank you. Now, it's possible to even go to court to challenge a chief or to compel a chief to render account. Mm -hmm. So if the uh, nine persons who are acting have sold land and they have not rendered account, the law now permits any uh, member of that community, be it stool, clan, or family, to go to court to compel them to render account. Mm. And if they go to court, they can get a court to injunct them where appropriate, if in his view they do not have the locus to deal with their land. Right. Um, this is from a lawyer, uh, Fred. He says, good afternoon, Samson and my Lord of 82. Before Act 1036, the restrictions on the grant of freehold was on stool land, but Act 1036 has extended it to family lands. Assuming I got a freehold from a family prior to the coming into, forth, into force of Act 1036, why can't I register the freehold interest, which I obtained before Act 1036 came into force? Because I note the Act 1036 seems to prevent that and operate retroactively. Is that not unconstitutional? So uh, this, this is a lawyer asking for... <laughs> we need to look at the provision, Section 9, Section 9, 1 and 2 of the Land Act. Okay. The 9 1 reads, a stool or skin or clan or family shall vest in the appropriate stool or skin or clan or family on behalf of and in trust for the subject. Okay, let's go to two. Mm -hmm. A person shall not create an interest in or write over any stool or skin or clan or family land which vests in that person, another person, or a group of persons, a freehold interest in that land, howsoever described. I will not interpret this to have retroactive effect. The person shall not create. So it takes prospective effect. 
from the date the law came into effect. And the law came into being on the 23rd of December 2020. 20. So if you acquired your interest, freehold interest, before uh, the law came into being, it's now your, you now have that interest. And for that matter, you can, in my view, transfer it. Okay. Um, I wanted to pose some questions, but uh, some more of you are doing that. I would uh, find an appropriate place to pause on the questions. This one says, is there a provision in the law which states that a compuls states a compulsory period to develop your land? This is Kofi Samuel. He doesn't say where he's sending it from. Um, some people give you um, a lease, and then they say that you have within uh, this period to do some developments on the land. If you don't, they will take over it. <laughs> I have no chance on any provision right. in the law. Mm. Will, will, that be, will that be fair? Will that be something that um, a court will be minded to uphold, that you have done a lease for me? OK, it's a question I cannot even ask, because the lease will state how many years you have. So thank you. What that means is that, by what we have said impliedly, um, to tell you that in, within a year, if you don't go on the land to do something, you lose it, doesn't happen. And remember also that we have uh, educated you on this show before. And my Lord began by saying that we buy lands as if we are, we, are, we are buying tomatoes. The law is that you don't buy land in the same way you buy things by the roadside. A land transaction must be evidenced by a conveyance. There must be a document. It's not just going to pay money and take a receipt. That's not how we buy land. Okay? So let me take this last two. Last two. They'll be the very last two I'll take. Mohammed in Bachuna and Wisdom in Sandema. You are the only two I'm taking now. Yes, Mohammed, you are calling us from Bachuna. What's your question? Oh, no. You have been on the line for a while. Hello, Mohammed. Okay, Wisdom. Hello, Wisdom. Okay, we have lost wisdom. Uh, I'm sorry, unfortunate. I won't be able to take any more calls. Um, there are lawyers who are sending me questions. <laughs> so I think that um, we should uh, continue. You were going to uh, educate us on a portion where we're talking about the disturbances and obstructions that come our way, how you may be able to go to court even without uh, is it issuing a writ, you, you have said you wanted to educate us on something like that. Yes. Mm. The law has been that before you can get an injunction against any, anybody who disturbs your development, you need to have issued a writ. And after issuing the writ, you get what we call, you can apply for interlocutory injunction. But if you look at Section 12.3, mm -hmm. Section 12.3 of the Land Act makes it possible for a person to go to a nearby court to get an order called a restraining order to just stop anybody who interferes with your um, development on the land. You, you don't need to have started as in what we say you must issue a writ. No, no, no. This one is mm. different from the interlocutory injunction. The okay. interlocutory injunction is provided under 4, 12 four. Okay. That one you have to, where you know the person and you are challenging ownership. Mm -hmm. But what pertains in Accra now, like a digging fee, mm -hmm. the person coming, he's not claiming ownership of the land, but right. he's saying that pay me money before I allow you to develop. Mm -hmm. So ownership is not in issue. Such a person disturbing your, you on your own land, all you need to go is to go to a nearby court and get an order, which is called restraining order. All right. To restrain the person from disturbing you on the land. Thank you so very much. Uh, we are still here on the law. This your legalize your help law. And I guess this uh, Justice Alexander Osei Tutu, uh, Justice of the High Court in Ghana and in the Gambia, who uh, has written uh, the book Essential Themes in Land Law and Customary Law educating us on the basic things we need about the law. Now, um, what can you say briefly about this book? 
many have said so many wonderful things about it. I was listening to Justice, um, Justice Atuba, and he says so much about the book and I encourage everybody uh, to pick a copy. I am reading the things that have been said by it by Yao Buafo, uh, the GBA president, uh, Professor Ernest Kofi Abochi, Dean, Faculty of Law, UPSA, uh, Dr. Ernest Ousu Dapa, Dean, Faculty of Law, uh, KNUST, uh, Justice, Justice Doche of the Supreme Court, uh, what he has had to say about it, <clears throat> the Deputy Attorney General Alfred Chua Yebua, uh, Justice Edward Amuakwa Sante, uh, President of the ECOWAS Court. Uh, so many people saying very, very wonderful things about this book. What's, what's so special about it? I know. <laughs> tell everybody. <laughs> I won't uh, let them get the copy for themselves. And right. I know they will come back mm. to thank. In us. fact, in fact, during this uh, encounter, what you have done, what he has done really, is to tell us some of the things here. Um, the things that you naturally didn't, you know, didn't seem to know, and even lawyers, you know, and I'm still getting some of the messages that uh, have come in. Well, my producers say, uh, we need part two of this discussion. Well, you're dealing with a judge. It's not that easy to get him uh, to come to your studio, but you never know. Uh, Oliver Twist asked for more. It may be possible to get a part two. So here is the book is um, Essential Themes in Land Law and Customary Law by His Lordship Alexander Osei Tutu. Um, he shares some portions of what it is in the new things that have come about as a result of the new law. I will en encourage everybody uh, to get some. Where, where will I get this? Almost all the uh, vendors who sell uh, law books, the lawyers know the all right. Mm. Uh, but beyond lawyers, because uh, there are corporates that need to ensure that they themselves have a way of securing their property and individuals who just want to read and know about them. If I walk to the Legon bookshop, I may get it. Around the courts uh, where law books are sold, I yes. will get it. Yes. Okay. Once again, we can't thank you enough, Justice Alexander Osei Tutu, uh, Justice of the High Court in Ghana and in the Gambia, and I'm, I'm sure some of you are surprised why I say Ghana and in Gambia. Well, he's active uh, dealing with the law in all these places. Thank you uh, so very much. This has been the law. It's your legal light. It's your help law. I'm Samson Ladi Ayenini. The show is produced under the leadership of Mami Isi Nyameche Thompson. Uh, some people have sent a lot of messages here. Good afternoon, Samson and his lordship. Uh, what happens at the end of a lease? Okay, that means the part two may happen. Uh, TK says, where can we find the book to buy? Those of us abroad. Is it already online somewhere? In the coming week, it will be on Amazon. In the coming week, it will be on Amazon, TK. Uh, Joseph uh, Nsia says, we will be able we will be able to get the book on amazon as well yes you will and joyce dankwa says so apart from the indenture what else does one have to have to prove purchase and ownership uh, a number of documents so we will definitely get a part two if my lord can't make it we will find um, a worthy you know replacement thank you all so very much have a good afternoon i'm samson ladia